we're in Axel's kitchen again, and we are going to do an Easter video for you. And just before we start, I want to show something for the cousins and any other strange people that might like to watch this, but this is really for the cousins. All right, Grandma Rose just came over, and I'm going to have to show you what she brought for Easter. All right, we got the lamb with jelly bean eyes and nose and coconut hair and a baby lamb. And those of the cousins in our family are going to laugh when they see the lambs because the lambs are for Easter. And the funny thing about the whole lamb thing is we don't know where it came from, but apparently there's a lot of lamb figurine cakes around. And if you Google it, Easter lamb cake or something like that, it'll come up. Anyway, do you know where the lamb came from? No. No? Yeah. Ooh. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have a mercy on us. All right, well, that, that's where the lamb came from, she's yeah, saying, yeah, Lamb of God. I, why is there a lamb cake on Easter Sunday? I don't know. But anyway, we got the lambs. And today we're in Axel's kitchen. You got your back to the camera, huh? You're supposed to be on this side of the camera. The camera's well, over there. Your wife is supposed to be over there. She's baking now. Okay. Here. Today it's uh, the Thursday before Easter. And what we're going to make today is what some people refer to, and we did in our family, as pizza cane. Pizza gina. Pizza gina? Yes. Pizza gina. I don't know. Pizza gina, pizza cane. You know, somebody posted something on Facebook not too long ago that had it spelled as P-I-Z-Z-A-C-A-N-E, which they said wasn't the correct spelling, but that's how you say it. Pizza Rustica, Rustica is the right way. But that's right. That's and then right there's people that like call it Pizza, pizza well, Rustica. But whenever you go anywhere and get Pizza Rustica, it's not what we make. And what it seems like is every family makes it different based on what their relatives did before. And it's, it's sort of like, for those non-Italians, it's sort of like a quiche. And it's got meat and cheese and a pastry shell. And some people will take like a pie crust and chop up meats and cheeses, put it in the pie crust, and then cover it with eggs, almost like they're making a quiche. And then they'll put a pie crust over it, bake it in the oven, and that'll be their pizza rustica. What we do in our family is we kind of make it like a lasagna. And we make our own crust. Part of it. Really? It's a noisy place, Axel's Kitchen, because when we open our cabinets, everything falls out. Um, anyway, well, we make it like a lasagna, and we make our own crust, which is really the best part of it. And we make the crust, and then we'll put like a layer of meat, a layer of cheese, layer of meat, layer of cheese, layer of meat. Wait, how many layers do we do? Five, four layers. Four layers? Grandma Rose says four layers. So four, we do four five. layers, and, or five layers, we'll show you. And then we pour eggs over it um, to sort of make even out the filling and then put a crust over it, bake it in the oven, and we don't really try to eat it until Easter. Um, that doesn't always work. You can eat it room temperature, you can eat it cold, or you can put it in the toaster oven, which is my favorite way to have it. Put a piece in the toaster oven, warm it up just a little bit, and it's really it. nice. So we're going to get everything Please set up, and we'll show you step by step how we make it. All right, so... Easiest way to do it is right on the countertop. So we clean the countertops off and we're going to make the dough, the doughs first? Yes, naturally. Naturally. I don't know. Well, you have to make the dough first and you line up the, uh, grease the pan and you line it up first with a layer of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we roll the dough and we Put the first, uh, the dough underneath. Underneath, on the bottom? Yes. Okay. So okay. we're going to make the dough first, because naturally you make the dough first. What do I want? Well. You want a knife? No. I got a Rural King box cutter. What? I got a Rural King box cutter. We bought it at my new favorite store, Rural King. Where? I can't slice something open with my box. No. But I put it a rural king. Rural king. Oh. It's a new store of rapid. All right, anyway. Now we. Grandma Rose has got the flowers. She's dumping it all over the countertop. I'm going to put about five pounds of flour on the. Five pounds of flour? Five pounds of flour. Do I have to bake? This is 10 pounds. Mm 
might have to make it again. Cheese. What kind of cheese am I cutting? Mozzarella. Mozzarella. Cheese. Over there. How do you say it? Mozzarella. Mozzarella. How do you say it? Mozzarella. For those of you no, Southerners, no. it's called mozzarella. It's the only time I can really make fun of the Southerners when you can't Very pronounce important. Italian food. Right. We may have to make this again. We should really right. buy one of those cheese mozzarella knives. Again. We don't have one of them, do we? What? A cheese knife. One of those like wire things, cheese yeah. slicer. Right. That's next on my tool yeah. list. Tools for the kitchen. I hope you're watching because this is the hardest part right here. What they're doing. In the meantime, I'm gonna take the mozzarella and I'm gonna slice it into like quarter inch thin slices. That's good. Now take that. You just put it aside. Okay, take a hold again. What would that dough be considered? Like pastry dough? Yeah. yeah. What would you call it? Yeah. Dough. I'm gonna dough. Crust. It wouldn't be called pizza dough. No. No. Crust. What it's kind crust. of dough would it be? The crust. Five crust dough? Five crust. All right, so back to the cheese. I'm not using a mandolin slicer because this is what happened last time I used a mandolin slicer. So anyway, we're just taking um, these blocks. What are they, one pound? Yes. One pound blocks of, of mozzarella or mozzarella. And you're going to take the, this cheese. It doesn't make a difference what brand. Um, the easiest way to slice it is to freeze it. And then the morning that you're going to make it, take it out of the freezer so it partially defrosts. And it's a little bit easier to slice when it's partially frozen. And then you're going to slice them up. And I don't really know how much. I mean, we got two pounds, but we might use less. We might use more. Who knows? I think we got more than two pounds. It's probably another pound in the refrigerator. Um, the, the quantities you're really going to have to figure out on your own. There's no set amount to the quantities. And right, what do we buy? Pounds of the. Cold cuts? Cold cuts or two pounds? No, about a pound and a half of ham, a pound of salami because it goes far. A um, couple, you know, about a half a pound of brisciotte, uh, provolone, about a, about a pound of everything if you want to make two pies. So there you go, about a pound of everything if you want to make two pies, get it sliced thin. Um, the thinner the cold cut, the better, not, not shredded, not just thin. thin. Not, yeah, not, not, not like paper thin, but on the thin side. This stuff, 
If it's a quarter inch, maybe it's an eighth inch. It's more like an eighth inch. As thin as you could slice it without it falling to pieces is how much you want to slice this. And then uh, they're going to keep making the dough. All they're doing is just kneading it and adding a little bit of slightly warm water and kneading it and some slightly warm water. There was really no measurement for the Crisco except for like two handfuls. Three handfuls. Put Three handfuls? Three handfuls. My mistake. Just knead it. I'm going to give you a little more flour, but I want you to just put this in your hands. No, in your hands and get off that. Yeah. And what did she call it? Pizza King. So what are you telling me to call it Pizza Rooster? Nobody that's, ever called that's it Pizza Rooster. correct King. way. So saying. where's Pizza King come from? Who knows? Uh, uh, what do you call from Italy said Pizza King is today. How do you know when it's done? Well, when it's nice and smooth. I think so. I felt it. Now, just take it. You make the sign of the cross. Say that on your radio. You yeah. gotta say, look at the thing and tell them. Now the dough is ready. Yeah. And we'll make the sign of the cross that next year will come out better than this year. Leave the knife here because she needs. Now, we're gonna make the thing. The bottom is always a little bit thicker right. than the top. The top is as thin as you could make it. And the bottom is just to hold the eggs right. in and everything. All right. So wow. I was going to say put the oven on. All right, cut a piece off. And half and half? half? No. no. A piece for the, your pan. Where's your pan? Right there. Just right there. All right. Do I got to grease that? Yes, give it to me and I'll grease it. Okay. We'll try it. Here. Whatever is left. All right, here's our first one we use in a glass Pyrex. The size really doesn't matter. No. The bigger the size, the more the shit you gotta put in it. All right, and you grease the pan with uh with the Crisco. Oh, well. And you eat the mozzarella that you're cooking it. See, I don't do that. I don't even taste anything. I'm on a diet. That's why now we're making it on Holy Thursday instead of Good Friday, like usual, because yeah. then you get to pick at all the cold cuts. <laughs> I'm on a diet. I'm going to have a, a meal bar. All right, so Grandma Rose greased it with the Crisco. Heavy on the Crisco, apparently. All right, they cut a little chunk off of the, uh, the dough that they made, and... Now she's gonna roll it out, which takes a little bit of while. Uh, takes a little while. I put some flour underneath, put some flour on top, so the roller moves nice. What do you want to do? You gonna keep picking it up and turning always? Isn't that what the rolling pin is for? Can you just? Well, you're not going sideways. See that roll? I got the rolling pin that spins by itself. I have know. another one in there. I just I, this was the first one I found. Another thing, uh, when you roll, don't press hard on the end. Just go easy, because that's it. Do it again this way. You don't go to the end. Okay. Do it this side. Try not to go that roll in the end. There's a reason for that. You're pretty much trying to roll it out to the size of the pan, including the sides yeah, and the inch. front and rear edges. Got to allow it an inch overhang. And then an inch overhang on top of that. Turn around. 
thick yet. See, the ends will be thicker, but we just could roll it out right out. So that's why you don't. All right, now when you get here, you see this? This has got to come on this. You know, Michelle, if you made more things throughout the year that involved the rolling pin, you'd be better at it when Easter time comes. You really don't want me to answer that, do you? She makes smart ass remarks. I'm going to give you a smart ass answer. Especially being you've got a rolling pin in your hand, I wouldn't try. Listen to your mother. When rolling pin is in oh. hand, you be nice. Roll. One day I I burnt Steve with his iron. <laughs> because uh, I don't know. He got me like it would hurt. You know him. He was always teasing. Like him. Keep away from me. I'm getting mad. Keep away from me, y'all. And I just touched him. Oh my God. I burnt him. <laughs> okay, I think that's fine. See now, the ends we're going to cut off. I know. Because we're going to even it out. Is your pan greasy? It's right here. You greased it. That's what I'm saying. That's a big pan. Is that big enough? Right now. Fold it in half. Put it halfway in. Halfway. Okay. That's enough. Know. Think it's long enough? No, it's not long enough. I don't think it's long enough. You can take a little bit, but move the whole thing over a little. Wait, wait, wait. It's thick, so you could handle it. I'll just go down. The key here is to get it in and not rip it or put a hole in it. You, you want it to be a barrier because we're going to fill it up with a, a wet mixture of goodness that we want to be retained inside the crust. This is the hardest part. If you have trouble with this, you could buy a pre-made crust. They're never going to be as good. Or you can just keep on Googling and try to find a, uh, a method or a recipe to make a vegetable shortening and flour crust. Pastry crust, really. All right, so we, she's trimming off some of the excess, not all of it. Because you need a little bit of it to, to roll back over to meet the top crust. I'm cutting where I told her. So Alright, so now that we have the bottom of the pastry shell in the pan, alright, we're going to set up our, our meat, which is, uh, we saw with ham? It's a prosciutto. Prosciutto. We start with prosciutto on the bottom. For those that are in the south and the other parts of the country, prosciutto. Alright, Pros when you go to the deli or the, the supermarket and you get your, your lunch meat, uh, you're going to get prosciutto. But, but if you find an Italian deli, it's prosciutto. Would it be? But what you need to do first is make sure they're fresh and taste it. Alright, I can't do that because I'm on a diet. I'm going to have a, uh, an easy bake oven muffin. And pretty much all you're going to do is just put it in there so you're not overlapping or anything. You're just covering the bottom of the crust with the prosciutto. With me. The first layer is prosciutto, but pink, red, because the crust is white. Next, go for a Now you put that over here. I know, not finished that. Don't uh, go easy. Alright, here's our, our first layer in our lasagna, and now we're going to add a uh, thinly sliced provolone cheese, soft provolone. Slicing cheese. Slicing provolone. Yeah. And what we need to do is get a knife. What do they call provolone on the south? Do they call it provolone? I don't know if they have it. Of course they have it. It's, it's cheese. It's, it's not 1970. It's cheese. Next. This is the Italian ham. Gabagol. Gabagol. Italian ham. 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 Italian 
onion ham gabagol. What's it say on the package? I'm really gabagol. interested to know how it's spelled. Ham gabagol. Weird. Don't they call it ham tappy? Yes. No, this is the cheese. That's the cheese. Maybe I throw it out. Ham cappy or gabagol? Let me see. It's capicola. Capicola? Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, so it's Italian ham, like she said, ham cappy or gabagol with a G, right? Gabagol with a G. C. Yeah, with a C. It sounds like a G, though. For the southerners, it's capicola. Yeah. Sort of like Coca-Cola, Capicola. C-A-P-P-I-C-O-L-A. Capicola. So when you walk into the uh, to the Kroger's, ask for some Capicola, and they're going to say, do what? Right, if you can't find Capicola or Gabagola, then you can, uh, you can substitute any kind of, uh, uh, like, Italian ham or spicy ham. Just not regular ham. All right? The mozzarella or mozzarella. All right, then show, show them how thin it is so that they get an idea for how thin it is. It's sort of like an eighth inch, eighth to a quarter inch. The thinner you can make it, the better. It's just tough to cut thin sometimes. Well, you could get it at the deli counter also sliced. You don't have to buy the blocks. You can just well, push you a lot more. Of a lot more. Of course. All the steel cold cuts is $48. It's not cheap. And it wasn't cheap when my parents did it years ago, and it wasn't this expensive. And she used to complain. But gas was five cents a gallon. Yeah. yeah. All right, so our, our next layer is just regular ham, regular deli ham. Yeah. I didn't get boar's head. That's regular ham. The, everything else is boar's head. He made me taste it. I said, all right. It's all the same when it goes in here. Because it's not one specific flavor. You could be healthy with that, but I got a whole pound that makes a lot. And we could use the brofoloni again. You go easy with that. Some people, instead of getting thin sliced cold cuts, will get it cut thick, right, like a quarter inch thick, and chop it up and mm -hmm. cube it, and throw everything mixed together all cubed right. in like that. And that's the way a lot of times you see it in delis and restaurants, because it's a lot faster to make. It's actually faster and easier to make. And they buy the pizza dough, and they do it with the pizza dough. That's how Linda Model does it. She chops it up. My grandfather used to make all that too. But when people chop it up, a lot of times they put pepperoni in it. They and pepperoni is very overpowering. You taste the pepperoni And constantly. you know what else they yeah. put in? Sausage. Sausage. Well, they sausage take it out of the casing yeah. and they fry it. That's I wouldn't mind the sausage, but the, the pepperoni is very overpowering. Whenever anybody, I ever had one that somebody put pepperoni in, it always just tastes like pepperoni. Oh, you should have told me. I, would have, uh, I don't want pepperoni in it. No, I don't want pepperoni in it because the whole thing tastes like pepperoni. Right. I don't like the pepperoni in it because it all tastes like pepperoni. I don't want it to taste like pepperoni. I want it to taste like a... Pizza. Yeah. Okay. Now this. <coughs> now we got the salami. Genoa salami. So it's salami. As you would say in the South, salami. Steve, we're going to need... Robert, we're going to need that cheese. I got cheese. I got cheese. Have a Boston bathroom. salami in the ham, not the prosciutto. Right. If you're going to double right. the cheese, you double the provolone. All right. Uh, we'll put the mozzarella 
Cheese on top. Do we know layer of mozzarella? We got more mozzarella? Yeah. Oh, there's another one there. Okay. Oh, yeah. You got the whole backyard done? Did you pick up what hole are you right? Not, I don't know. We would have. You got to put it in the garbage can with the bag. After well, that, we're going to pick it up. Huh? Make, uh, pick it up. Put the ham and then we'll put the eggs. Oh, sure. See, uh, you wow. get a big bowl and put a dozen of more eggs. Is it a dozen or is it 18? We, I told the man the 18. Well, it's according to how thin. You could put 18. Well, we could put 18 because if anything, we just use it if we make an omelet tomorrow. Save it and make an omelet. No, we're going to make another one. No, I'm saying if there's no omelet. If you make too much of Am I doing gaba bowl or regular ham? No, regular ham. Regular ham. Okay. Uh, you gotta do uh, from foot. It's according to the size of the pan. You use the eggs. I would say that pan is a big it's size. I, I would say try to go for sixteen eggs. Sixteen? Yeah. Shells in there. Eggs in there. And Steve, now we spread the ragots. Oh, oh, you gotta mix the pepper. You gotta put a lot of black pepper in. In with the eggs. Can we just use eggs. this one? The table grind? Alright, so after we got, so what do we have? We have. Finer or table grind no, is okay. Table grind. We have <coughs> meat, cheese. Then you're very thirsty. Meat, pepper. provolone. Me, did, did you, were you keeping track? Give me a spoon. Meat, cheese, meat, cheese, meat, cheese, meat, cheese, do you get it? Three quarters of the way full. You end up with the meat. And you're finishing. You start with meat, end with meat, and now you're taking some. How do you say this? What is this called? Regatta. Huh? Regatta. Michelle, what is it called? Regatta. Regatta. Or if you're in the South. Regatta. Regatta. <laughs> now, don't spread it out. Regatta. Put a lump here yes. and there. Yes, lumps. You put lumps. Yes. Right, we put lumps because it spreads out on its own when you cook it. Right. And it looks pretty inside when you go to... Oops. You want big lumps, little lumps? That's big fine. Lumps. Oh, big lumps. Good cheese. Yeah, you can't focus too. Anyway. The corner. That's it. That's it. Alright, now we've got to put this... Alright, put this aside and stop rolling. Because we can't put the eggs right, in so until you start rolling. Steven is... Oh, oh, get out of here. All right, so Steven's cracking 18 eggs. 16 eggs? Yes. 16 mm -hmm. eggs. He's cracking 16 eggs into a bowl. We're going to preheat the oven, mm -hmm. and we're going to uh, we're gonna do a, a, the, the pastry for the top, which is going to be very thin, right? Yes. Now, are we baking them all at once? No, you got to put it in the oven. What temperature? 350. Put it a, a little higher to start, and, and then we lower it. So like 400? All right, 16 to 18 eggs. If you buy the 18 egg, you know, a dozen and a half thing, and then you add in black pepper and a lot of it. A lot of black pepper. All right, so there's our eggs with the black pepper. You could see the black pepper. That's how you know you got enough. Okay. Fill it up. And then show the Polish eggs. All right. Got it. It's not going to stay out. I'm just going to put it away. Yeah. It's got to work. Come in. All right, so there's our... Your pour in. Okay, good. Here. Good. You got too much, I'll take it. Um, yeah, you can take a little bit. Yeah. Hi.
Sizi. Sizi. Stop walking into the tripod. You Is there anything oh, wow. over here? He cut yeah. you for extra. Come here. Now we roll. Yeah, now. You started, so now I can't. Why not? Yeah. Gonna, it's not going to be there. Alright, All right, come over here. Oh, 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 we got a little bit of a knot here, a hole. I was never good at this part. The easiest part. It's not the easiest part because you got to roll it. You got to take so the that bottom. It seals up. Take the bottom and squeeze it together. Yeah. Oh. Squeeze the bottom together so it doesn't open. Four. Now here's. All right. So now we're just putting a little egg on top. Yeah. Oh, these are actually. Uh, Taking movies? It's a small idea. Very good. Yeah. I've been doing movies for eight months. I know. But to do something like this, you'll have the bottom. That's enough. Last week I recorded you on your cell phone. It's good. Yeah, I know. You have to. Are you probably going to put it on Facebook? I don't want that. No, we need. That's a good one. We need. What? He's videoing. All right, go ahead, put it in the oven. That's enough holes? Yeah. All right, so you seal it up and roll it. Some egg wash and some holes. How many holes? And just for here and there, let the air out. Here and there. Here and there to let the air out. And then you stick it in the oven, middle rack, 350 degrees. Oh, no, what do we got at 400 right now, right? All right, now lower it. No, you no. need it for 400, 400 for, for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, 400 degrees. So it's going to go like 10 minutes, right, at 400, yeah. I'm gonna set the just to seal it up a little bit, right? Yeah. And then 350. 350 for about an hour, an hour and a half. Hour, until hour and a half until the, it looks, crust, the crust looks, looks cooked. cooked. Okay, down we go. I'll do this one. I want to try to just do it myself. Because when I always have help, I'm not always going to have help when I'm making it. No. See, there's a lot of overhang here, so... No, I know, I'm not finished yet. I have to... No, got it. no, take it out again. See, there's more on this. Okay. I need more on my end. Got that easy to side Okay. Do you want the big or the little? I just need a block. Oh, I guess that's a big Actually, tell the soft cream cheese. Huh? The soft cream cheese. What? Why is he whispered? Not whipped. Oh, I don't want to interfere with this. <coughs> Not the whipped, just the spreadable. Spreadable. Yeah. You don't like it, Judge? I don't. Okay, what's after that? Cheese. Mozzarella again? Oh, oh bajoute, provolone, ham, mozzarella, gabagol, provolone, salami, mozzarella. And, and then ham again. And, and then ham again. it together. Squeeze Top and it. the bottom. Yes. But make sure you got grab the bottom and put your finger on the bottom and give it a twist. And you're gonna start twisting it. See this here? Just turn turn it. 
See, here's the bottom. Got to make sure, squeeze it together. And if it's too thick, you could cut it off, but make sure you know what you're cutting. Make sure you got the bottom. I have it. Good. Put it in right now. Even with the other one cooking? Yeah. You know why? If you let this lay, the eggs are going to make the dough very soggy and it won't cook right. Oh, okay. It'll cook. Okay, what else? Okay, stick it in the oven. Okay, it's going to go right in the oven? Yeah, it's going to go in long ways. No. Alright, put that in. We could always move it up. You know? Because then when you're making the other one, I'm going to have to put it in next to it. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so you have to time the second one when in it. 305, right? So 15 minutes behind. All right, so that's two in, and we're going to make the third one, and if we have enough filling ingredients left, we'll roll out some more dough, and we'll make a fourth one even. They never go bad. This stuff stays in the refrigerator for quite some time, um, a good two weeks, if not three weeks. Um, what do you say now? Why? Yeah, three weeks when you put it in the toaster oven. It's fine. Freeze it. Freeze it? You freeze it. Oh, is that what you were doing? All right, so you could freeze it. I guess not until two weeks, or we'll freeze it, and then take it out, put it in the toaster oven, and it's good. Anyway, they're going to do number three and a mini number four if you have enough. Why? Well, you just make one bigger one. No, you got a pirate set, too. You can't make them all. What I'm saying is I just make, not as big as the first one, but I have one in between. Yeah, that's fine. We have enough stuff. So we got enough stuff to make four. We're going to wind up making four. Um, I'm going to make three. Three. This is the big one. Oh, that's the third. Oh, so instead of making, okay, we're gonna, whatever. Three. Four. I say four, she says three. I say three, she says four. The married guys know. This this is normal. Is she talking over my shoulder? Did she make a face over my shoulder? All right. Anyway, you got it on two. If you miss something, rewind and watch it again. When they're getting ready to come out of the oven, We'll show you what they look like, and we'll show you what we do. Now, 10 minutes on 400, just to give it a little seal on that first one, and then you throw it in the big one especially, it's more important to hit the 400. Is she talking over my shoulder again? He's tired. And the second one, we didn't do that 400 thing because the oven's already on, the other one's cooking, so the smaller ones are a little easier to cook, actually. So if you had a choice, make multiple small ones rather than huge ones because the small ones are definitely easier to handle and easier to make. We'll be back when they're ready to come out. Alright, so that first one has been in the oven probably a total of about an hour and 15 minutes. It's still not done. You saw what it looked like. It was starting to get golden brown. You want it to be a good golden brown. Not burnt, but, but golden brown enough where it's good. And we'll snap a nice photo and we'll put it on the thumbnail when it's cooked, completely cooked, and you'll see what kind of nice color it actually gets. It's going to cook down. When you use the glass Pyrex trays, it's a lot easier because you can sort of see the underside and gauge how much it's cooked by looking at the underside. Um, Ma, yes. anything else to say about it? you got to speak up. Anything else to say about the no. pizza game? Once they're cooked, you take them out and you put them on a rack and you cool them off. Okay, so that's it. Cool them on a rack. So you're going to pull them out, you're going to sort of flip it over and then flip it back onto the rack. Cool it on a rack. Once it's cool, goes into a refrigerator wrapped in, what are we wrapping? Wax paper? Wax paper. Never, never foil. Never foil, never saran wrap, wax paper in the refrigerator. If you want to freeze it, same thing, wax paper. Like I said, it's going to last up to two weeks, right? Two weeks? We're going to go with two weeks? Up to two weeks in the refrigerator. If you want it to last longer than that, cut it up. Freeze it, and then you can take a, a chunk out or two at a time. But when you freeze it, use wax paper also in the freezer, and you can actually rubber band the pieces with the wax paper so the wax paper doesn't come off, and then they're individual stacks in the freezer. All right? 
when we had we had some extra dough left over, and we actually made calzones. And for you in the south, it's calzoni. But we made calzones with, uh, you, know, the, you can see behind me with the extra dough. We took some leftover meatballs, we had in the refrigerators, some leftover sausage, added some ragout, we took some ham and cheese, put that in there. So we made calzones for dinner. And my plan is to get no Michelle... No one wants to cook dinner after doing this all day. To make... Let's clean the leftovers out of the refrigerator calzones once a week with the dough. Okay. Because if that happens, that's 52 dough times. That's 52 times making this dough once a week before the next Easter comes, and she'll be a pro at making the dough, because definitely the hardest part about this is making that dough. Yeah, you can buy pizza dough, you can buy pastry dough in the supermarket, it never comes out the same, and the cousins out there that are salivating, you know what I mean, that flaky, flaky crust. You love it. So anyway, that's it from Axel's Kitchen and Axel's Garage today. If you like the episode, please give us that thumbs up, especially in honor of my big red wrapped tip cut off thumb and if you like what we're doing here at Axis Garage subscribe to our channel thanks for watching